Hi, and welcome to this course on Office 365 Fundamentals. I'm Alistair Spears. And I'm Jeff Medford. And so we're here today to talk about Office 365. For IT pros, we're going to share a lot of the kind of fundamental building blocks around Office 365. But before we get, in, uh, get on, just a little bit more about us. So I'm a Senior Operations Program Manager uh, here at Microsoft in the Office 365 team. My team focuses on deployment, adoption, and readiness. And we love to focus on all those things that IT pros really care about. And I'm Jeff Medford, and I'm a technical uh, product manager with the Office 365 team, and I focus on deployment. And within the deployment pillar, there's, there's all kinds of scenarios we can drive with IT pros, and fast track and deployment for Office 365 is one of those things we'll talk about today. Yeah. So a little bit about this course. This course is, has six modules. Uh, we start the introduction this session. We'll move on for a brief overview of Office 365 for IT professionals getting started with Office 365 deployment. We'll talk more about deploying Office 365. And we'll finish up talking about service communications and change management in Office 365. But that's kind of an introduction. You know, when we think about Office 365, we think of it you know, as a cloud service, but really more than a cloud service. It's kind of the culmination of everything we do in the Office team around productivity. So it's a combination of the public cloud assets that Microsoft has, and of course, all the latest apps that we have at in the office team as well. And really some of the core fundamentals are really doing your best work across whatever device you're using and also mirroring that with an enterprise grade service. So not yeah, really absolutely. consumer, we, re you know, we need to be very clear about how consumer is affected and how uh, enterprise is actually deployed. Absolutely, and the way people work has changed. And in the office team, we've been building office for over 30 years now. Uh, and Everyone asks us, like, when will you be done? When will you be finished with this productivity thing? And the reality is that work keeps evolving, right? And as, soon, as work keeps evolving, it's, it's kind of our job to keep evolving the technology uh, to match the user's expectations. And now, like, to doing your best work, it's no longer about what you do at your PC all the time. More and more, it's about how you share uh, with all the other devices that you have. Can you roam across your PC, your tablet, your smartphone? through a web browser, a kiosk PC. You may have four or five different computing devices that you use in the course of a day. So it's a much more complicated environment than it used to be for IT professionals to manage. Definitely, and I think some of the core scenarios when you think of uh, doing your best work with the enterprise as the integration point for those, that you have the, the natural language interfaces, you have the, the ability to do a cross-device, uh, plat cross-platform and everything yeah. we'll talk about. Um, and you have these kind of core fundamental pillars that Office invests in. So we want to really yeah. touch on those from a user experience. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that I find really fascinating about kind of the new workplace is this idea of a dynamic workplace where once upon a time you knew exactly who your staff were and who your employees were and who was involved and, and who IT had to manage because they came into the office every day, they sat in the building, and IT was kind of the network of the building. It was kind of like the electricity of the building sort of thing. It kept everything running. But now more and more you have these kind of expanded networks of people. You have your contractors, you have vendors, you have partners, even customers, and all these people participate in that the core thing that your, your office does and your work does. And they may not be in the office, they may be spread out, they may be remote salespeople. Uh, and sometimes you're even collaborating with your competitors. If you take an example of like an industry standards board or something like that, you wanna open up some of your assets, you wanna share and collaborate with probably your kind of chief competitors as you work on a standard for the whole industry and those sorts of things. And so all of these things kind of change the way that we need to think about collaboration and productivity. And I think some of the points you already hit, it also merges with, are you at home? Are you at work? I mean, yeah. we all kind of blur the lines now as far as where we're answering emails, where we're having these conversations. And that's really another big part of it. So it's, it's not only working with your competitors and having to be responsible and having to have really compliance and governance around that yeah. control, but it's also wherever you are, however you are at whatever time of day. And yeah. that's really what we see from also an investment side is it's the merging of home and office. I have a single phone, I have a computer I use, and everything is on that. And yeah. During the business day, sometimes I'm doing personal things. Yeah. During the evening, sometimes I'm, I'm triaging and helping from a business side. So those are some big parts of it. And with that, you really have to flow across that responsible organization to say, how do you govern that? 
where do you allow devices to come in from? Yeah. How do you keep mailboxes secure? And so it flows across all of these pillars as one kind of experience. Absolutely, and increasingly that's the role of IT pros to manage all of that for the organization. You know, as we're getting more and more sophisticated with how we're using technology, so are governments, so are re regulations, so are our compliance standards, our legal teams, and those sorts of things. And so more and more, there's such a bigger focus on IT pros to manage those sorts of, of scenarios as well. So before we get into all the technology, let's talk about the role of IT pros in Office 365. You know, the amount of times that I've heard people saying, oh, I'm unsure if I don't have my server, I don't know where uh, my job will be, and those sorts of things. And, and what we've seen that can be, uh, it's totally not the truth. Like we've seen even though you kind of don't have to manage that hardware anymore, there's so many more things that IT pros really need to be doing. Absolutely. Uh, and this frees them up to do those sorts of things. Yeah, and a lot of times we, we talk to our customers, Alistair and I do a ton of presentations, we do executive visit, visits, we do uh, events where we're talking to hundreds, if not thousands of customers. And one of the things that Alistair was mentioning is the fact that, um, you know, they still have a ton of work to do. IT pros have lists and lists of things that are prioritized by the business, prioritized by IT, and that's one of the things we hear feedback from our IT pros and our customers is that uh, the cloud has my, you know, brought some efficiencies, it's brought some management and control, it's brought the ability to really uh, you know, dig in but it didn't get rid of a lot of the management or a lot of the governance side. But what it does is if you have a, a list of 15 things that you're working through it through your you know, budget, through your uh, you know, fiscal year, if we can knock four or five of those out that are the ones that are not as prioritized, that are not as strategic, you know, mail workloads or some of the, the storage side of things, if we can help knock those out, IT pros then have the time, the budget, and the availability to really drive some more business scenarios. Absolutely. And so when we think about like the traditional IT operations framework and all those different things that IT pros need to do in our day-to-day -day jobs, there's quite a lot of different things. Uh, you know, this is just kind of a sample of, of an ITIL methodology here I've got up on the screen. Uh, but really, I like to kind of simplify that down even further to the things that you do to just run the business, keep everything going, keep the lights on, uh, and just operate all the technology that you already have inside of the organization. And then there's the things that actually grow and transform and add business value to the organization, help you stay competitive, stay up to date, and keep the business moving forward as well. So if we kind of simplify this down to the things you do to run and things you do to grow and transform, it's kind of a nice mental model of what we all do in IT. Uh, but here's the problem. You know, when we look at our budgeting and when we look at budgeting kind of across the IT industry, generally we have to make those decisions about what do we do to just keep the lights on and what do we do to actually invest and grow the business itself? And what we find is that about 63% of IT budgets are taken up with all that stuff to just keep the lights on, run the business and those sorts of things. And only 37% can be spent on the stuff that actually makes change, makes the business uh, more adaptable and gets it ready for all the, the new uh, challenges that they face. And so when we're thinking about that, you know, all of that, that run state, you, you can't not invest in that, right? You have to have all that stuff going. The phone starts ringing if email's down, yep. if the SharePoint's out of capacity and all those sorts of things. So it's, it's an important thing to, to do. But if you don't invest in that top line, like growth and transformation, then you slowly get out of touch with what the business is really after. And that puts even more pressure on IT budgets as well. So it's, it's a delicate balance that we all have to play uh, in the IT scenario. It is, and, and really looking at some of the typical budgeting, it, it also comes down to impact. And from an IT perspective, how are you impacting the business? And if you're, if you're just keeping the lights on and you're just keeping the servers running, you're just keeping the backups going, uh, at the end of the year or at the end of your, your uh, review cycle, um, great, everything ran, everything went smooth, but how did you actually impact the business? And I think that's a, a lot of the things we're gonna talk about today yeah. in some of the deployment side and moving your organization to online. It's really about affecting change within business, affecting change within users, and being able to manage that really clearly so that a strategic investment can be made and really you can move business forward from a, a business unit to actual users to getting people going on the latest technology. Yeah. So when we think about modern society is everyone's using technology every day. It's the consumerization of technology has made it cheap for people to bring their own devices, use their own devices, and expect more out of their IT. 
the role of IT really starts to change. It starts to become an enabler of business evolution rather than just someone that's maintaining the infrastructure itself. And so when we think about what we all need to do in IT is shift that, that balance from all the money we're spending on maintaining their technology to be focusing on involving the business as well. And so then the kind of key things that our managers are always chasing us down for, reducing total cost of ownership, adding more cap capabilities, reducing time to market for new products and new solutions. Uh, that's really kind of the increased ROI or the increased return on investment for IT investments. And so where Office 365 comes into this, it allows you to kind of, it's not quite outsourcing, but it allows you to outsource some of those commodity things that the business just doesn't want to pay for. Like, no one wants to pay for a guy to carry around a screwdriver and swap out hard drives anymore, especially when it's something just as core as email or as core as document storage and those sorts of things. The last thing you want to do as an IT pro is worry about hardware failures of storage and those sorts of things, whereas storage should be cheap, should be easy, and we can do it a lot more effectively in Office 365. So we want to really reduce those platform costs that you all have uh, in the infrastructure that you run but also deliver the latest technologies. And this is probably the biggest difference when we think about Office 365 as opposed to, say, a traditional outsourcing environment. With an outsourcing environment, you're kind of locked in that particular environment. You sign up for five years or 10 years or something like that. And 10 years later, you're looking at the same environment, right? Maybe you got one refresh during that time, depending yep. on how, uh, how much foresight you had when you thought about negotiating that contract with the outsourcer. But generally, it doesn't change. Whereas in a cloud service like Office 365, it's constantly evolving. You're seeing changes into the service every two weeks. So you're seeing this great channel of innovation. And at Microsoft, Office 365 is essentially our newest uh, part of the Office product. So you see things now first in Office 365 than you will in Exchange Server or SharePoint Server or anything like that. And so all of a sudden, you're at the cutting edge of all this technology without any of that build lead time, without any of that need to go and build new infrastructure, test new infrastructure, and put it all uh, up and running. So you're always on the latest stuff, which I think has been a huge benefit for everyone that's already on the service. Yeah, and I think what that also alludes to is the importance of what change management and some of the new opportunities from an IT professional really starts to do. So, you know, as we look at uh, the next kind of slide and the next detail of how we see some of these typical operations, some of the typical things you might do within an IT environment, it really is looking at the future, seeing those quick release hits, and being able to utilize a change management infrastructure, really uh, propelling the business forward without those lead times, without those build costs, without having to sign new contracts, because Office 365 continues to move forward. And from a Microsoft investment, uh, this is where our engineering teams live. This is where they do their work, is in Office 365. So as these features come through, it becomes incredibly important from an IT perspective to understand them, to know how to implement them, and then to help get users and business uh, units moving forward with those new features. Absolutely. So when we think about kind of those IT roles, you know, I'll leave you with this kind of thought that you know, the things that become more and more important are things like service strategy, things like continual service improvement, service design. But that service operation stuff, we can really optimize at scale, the economics of scale that we have in the Microsoft data centers to really reduce all of that cost as well. So the things in green that you see on the screen are the things that get more and more important as you, you move forward, and as you free up more budget, more time to focus on, on those things and focus on the strategic part of your job rather than kind of the just grunt work of our job as well. And really what this allows you to do is it allows you to focus back on your users. Like IT technology is really user centric uh, and everything that we do in Office 365 and in productivity relies on users. Like there would be no productivity if there wasn't someone using Word, someone using Excel, someone sending email, someone sharing with SharePoint. This isn't kind of faceless backend technology. This is core to your user's day-to-day -day life. So it's really important that you focus on the users as you move to technologies like Office 365. So that's just a quick look at some of the things in Office 365 and how it affects our jobs as IT pros. Uh, following up, we'll talk more about Office 365 for IT pros and really the technology behind Office 365. And we'll focus a lot more on deployment as we move through the later modules. Thanks for listening.